I hope you're ready for some science. The scientists have returned. This is We Rogue Like It ranking for Nuclear Throne. I'm your host who f- totally forgot to reference the mm-hmm. listing of what the names are. Bought Dr. Boss, PhD. I'm your host, Boston. Over there is Moonpeer who gets to decide his own uh, um, title Dr. for this. Moon. He's Dr. Moon. He's, and he is Monkey, Monkey Senior. Senior. I think yep. he's Monkey Senior PhD. There you go. PhD. And you, you are um, DDS probably. There we go. Who cares? Because we're here to talk about uh, Nuclear Throne. Don't diminish the titles, Boston. If there's one thing this show has kept up consistently, both this and the main show, is titles. Don't right. diminish And the talking titles. about food. And food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had the best sandwich today. Anyway, oh, pre-show. No. Wait, save it, for the, <laughs> save, it for the, save it for the food show, that video game podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, we're here to talk about <clears throat> Nuclear Throne and... Uh, put it in our giant list but before we talk about that we're going to talk about our overall thoughts about the game mostly so that uh the runtime of the show doesn't spoil where it hits in our list so moon why don't you <laughs> why that don't why you we start doing that is it 100 <laughs> percent oh it's <laughs> a you... episode i bet you it's number 10 yeah two minute episode all right it's below sunless sea all right see you later <laughs> all right moon uh let's talk about a, a Last episode, uh, episode four, we just talked about our uh, overall disdain for d- explosions. So let's oh. talk about our uh, overall thoughts about Nuclear Throne. Okay, I vote Monkey goes first because he's the okay. one who's actually beat this, and he's the one who's put the <laughs> most time into this. Even not just this week, four weeks, I almost said this week. That's how long it feels. Um, <laughs> but he's put the most time into it. He's made the most progress, and I feel like as the youth of the nation. Shout out to POD. We are, um, we are. <laughs> I will, I will get behind that. If uh, monkey, if you'd like to uh, to care off the festivities here. <laughs> All right, um, man, where to start with this game? This this game is hard. Like yes. that's yeah, that is the most prominent thing about this game, I believe. Because like like we were talking about in the other episode, um. Everything does so much damage, and a lot of the characters don't have that much life. Um, and there isn't that many w- ways to get health back. Like, it's just the random health packs and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, this this game is so hard that it took me 40 hours <laughs> to beat <laughs> yeah. it once. And, like, that that's probably the longest out of any roguelike that I've played to Mm -hmm. get a completion that I have gotten a completion. Unlike, you know, like Galaxy, I haven't yet, but yeah. Yeah, right. Um, The thing with that as well is usually that's a roll. Like, normally that starts a roll. Like, you beat a roguelike once, and then normally it's like, okay, you go from 40 hours to five hours, then three hours, then two hours, then one hour, then literally every single run, it's like beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. I don't see this game being that kind of game. No, I don't no. think so. No. Um, I will say, though, like, the, I really like the art in this. Like, mm-hmm. other than. Yeah, the I do art. too. The art style is pretty cool. Uh, Especially, like, the big character portraits. Like, yeah, that, when, that pixel art is really solid. Yeah, when the yeah. bosses show up. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Like, the. Um, I really like the weapons in the game. Yes, mm-hmm. there's like they, a lot more they, variety than I thought there would be. Yeah. yeah. They feel very that weapon, you know, like all the shotguns feel very sh- shotgunny and mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know, it's I feel like they have a okay balance, like obviously everyone's going to have their own preferences. Like I love mm-hmm. the shotguns and then you know, mm-hmm. I mean uh, the crossbows, sorry. And yeah, I remember nope, Moon saying nope, like nope, he you're a monster. hates the crossbow. You are a monster. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's yeah. That's... Enter the Gungeon got me set up for crossbows. Oh. <laughs> I killed myself with a toxic crossbow today because well, I fired it beautiful. into a wall two inches from my face, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> that was a mistake." It's and a poison explosion. Death. Yeah, the yeah. The um, as for playing it after this. I, I feel like not. I'm I'm not going to, just because, like these past two weeks, I haven't been able to get even close to beating it again, and right. I can, 
I can put this game down resting easy that oh I beat it once so it's yeah. <laughs> like, you, you've seen it wipe yeah. my hands off of it <laughs> right yeah. right uh, Moon how about you I mean pretty much like Monkey said like it's the biggest thing that stands out to me like the certain things about it that I love like I'm not sure how I feel about the controls because I played it on television through PC via Steam Link um, I, we did discuss how we all played it at one point I think but yeah i think mine was the suboptimal way to play it because although the controller feels okay it definitely feels like it's not bad you know i'm missing out on the accuracy that the mouse can give you Mm -hmm. and the ability to just hold your mouse in one position and strafe around a corner is pretty handy kind of thing when it comes to shooting people um on the weapons really quick did anybody have a specific favorite weapon I liked a lot of assault rifles, like the mm-hmm. three burst ones I thought were surprisingly I I think Monkey's right where each of the weapon types feels really interesting. Like the um the minigun feels different from the assault rifle, the, feels different the, from like the pop gun. The triple like those machine all, gun. Where, where, yeah, you know, like triple, triple machine, machine gun. gun. Like it's, those all feel they they seem on the surface like they'd be fairly similar, but they all mm-hmm. feel very different. Yeah, like my favorite gun period was the bog standard machine gun because it yeah. was accurate and it did not chew through ammo. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the triple machine gun because you can just run into a room right. and circle straight from fire and everybody, everything's dead. Yeah. But the standard machine gun had a really good combination of rate of fire versus accuracy. Like, yeah. I know I wasn't spitting out three bullets every single time I heard that noise with the triple machine gun, you are... And it's yeah. just like, yeah, okay, I've got one level worth of ammo and my ammo is at max. Like, Yeah, yeah. So like, I did find a, a good combo of weapons I loved. I did experiment more with the, the melee stuff, and that can be seriously powerful. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is you have to get a melee weapon really early and then spec in that melee direction. Right. Really hard, because right. the shovel is amazing if you can get the range on it up. Yeah, because it does the three directional hit, and if the range on it is big enough, you can literally just stand on the other side of all of the walls and beat the crap out of people. Works really yeah. nicely. Ah, right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, the main thing I'm going to take away from this thing is the difficulty. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm, not, I have full gamer score in some games that people would say I'm stupid for doing that. Mm-hmm. Eternal Sonata comes to mind. <laughs> um, you fool. <laughs> The two original Dead Spaces with their ridiculously hard difficulty oh, setting yeah. and limited saves. Dark Souls. I have done the hard game gamut, and I am all about playing it on hard. You give me a game, I will play it on hard. Number one, for the sweet, sweet Chivos. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, because I like the challenge. I like the the back and forth of who is better, me or the game. This doesn't feel as hard so much as it feels sadistic, where it's just like... right. I'm going to punch you in the face repeatedly mm-hmm. over and over and over again. It feels very much like when an Isaac expansion comes out and like that first couple of weeks, it's really hard until he sort of pulls back on it. And it's like, all right, now it's challenging, but it doesn't feel, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel overly difficult. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, a, that's the biggest downside for this for me is, is the difficulty level. Mm hmm. I mean, stick her on the Xbox, and I w- if I would have started it then, maybe I'd still keep playing it just so I can go for those achievements. Yeah. I, have full, I used to have full gamer score, but I definitely have base gamer score and the first DLC on Isaac of all yeah. the games. <laughs> you cannot tell yeah. me I don't like yeah. hard You've games. You've put in your time. Yeah. Yeah. But for this, I don't know. I doubt I will be going. It'll stay installed for a while, but I doubt I'll be going back to it on a regular basis. You'll, you'll look at your list in a year and you'll be like, oh, Nuclear th- I haven't played in like a year. I'll just, I'll just get rid of it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I don't have too much else to add uh, on top of that. I think Nuclear Throne is, I think it's a really solid game that I think has more to it and more unlockables than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, especially yeah. since it's a couple years old now and I feel like the expectation lately has been well, your game has to have 400 unlockables and 300 levels and 15 yes. characters. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Gunn. Right. <laughs> Thank right. you both for that. And, and I feel like I think Nuclear Throne has, has more to it than I was expecting, but I think, like you guys, I, 
I really think that the difficulty didn't really turn me off from it because I I was I felt like I was getting more and more successful. Mm-hmm. But I the difficulty is going to be the reason why I don't return to it. Um and I think you I don't, don't think want I to will pull another sixty six thousand hours into another roguelike. Well and I it's sort of it's sort of tough because I won't play this game again, not because it's not bad, but there's just so much other stuff to play that I could yep. continue to unlock stuff in Isaac. Uh, I could continue to unlock stuff in Gungeon. Like, I still haven't seen 100% of those games that when you stack up Nuclear Throne next to those things, which is probably a little bit unfair, I don't think that there's a reason for me to, to return to it. And I, I have already deleted it from both Steam and my PS4. So like, <laughs> there's, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm, it's a, it's, I think it's a really solid game. And I think had I played it when it came out, I'd probably have a little bit more fondness for it. But I think so much of the genre has eclipsed this I mean, game let's since do, then. Let's also talk about that. Like, shall we? Like, I mean, some of the games we played, like specifically the end of last year as well, we ended 2019 on two of the newest games in the roguelike genre Mm -hmm. in dicey dungeons and legends of bumbo and we both of which especially dicey is really good yeah and then we started 2020 with one of the oldest in the genre (laughs) yeah Yeah. and and as we found out one of the most difficult ones Mm -hmm. this thing came out in 2015 on steam yeah 15 yeah all right, well, let's get down to science. Um, I think usually we've been starting with the top ten, but I sort of want to start at the bottom of the list here, just just a in refresh. case someone, yeah, yeah, a little bit of refresh, but also in case someone feels very strongly that should be uh, low on the list. Okay, so shall we shall we do a straw poll on that really quick? Like, start on top ten or not, just to get a, a mouth feel for it. Sure, I say start on top ten. I would say too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a quick refresher then, starting from the bottom. Number 16 is Sunless Sea, uh, Don't Starve, Cave Blazers, Riddle Corpses EX, Galaxy. Number 11 is Prey, Moon Crash. So, is Nuclear Throne better than Dungreed? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this one's kind of hard for me, because I... We know how much you you love Dungreed. (laughs) I... I, I like Nuclear Throne enough, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Dungreed is is a good attempt at taking things like Nuclear Throne, like that art style, that look, and then throwing in a little bit of Spelunky too. Mm-hmm. But it, it doesn't quite gel everything together the way something like this does. I feel like mm-hmm. right. Okay, is Nuclear Throne better than the Swords of Ditto classic? Yes, art style alone. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I think Swords of Ditto is a beautiful game. Like, it genuinely mm-hmm. is a beautiful game. It's well drawn, it's well realized. It's a Zelda clone, kind of. Sure. Whereas this this feels grimy, it feels dirty, and it's meant to, for clarification's yeah. sake. Mm-hmm. And I, I do feel like it's really well designed. There are some touches in here and there that it could do with tweaking. Make that ninja dress in white, just so I can see him, please. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, scooch up there. Is Nuclear Throne better than a Darkest Dungeon? I'm worried about this pause. <laughs> I say yes. Nobody knows. It's it's, it's the darkest dungeon <laughs> question. It's always the darkest yep. dungeon question. It is. I think that Nuclear Throne is a better roguelike than Darkest Dungeon. I think Darkest yep. Dungeon is a better game than Nuclear Throne. Both uh, incredibly yeah. difficult. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dungeons, Darkest Dungeon, probably a little bit easier to save yourself from the difficulty than uh, Nuclear Throne is. They're both, uh, mm-hmm. they're both the same level of, e- of, e- of easiness. It's all yeah. at four and you're saved. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Finally free. I, I, would, I would put Nuclear Throne above Darkest Dungeon, I think. Okay. I... I I don't know, for just in a roguelike setting, I feel like it plays more like a roguelike than Dark mm-hmm. Dungeon. I don't know, this 
Right. Yeah. No, I, would, I would agree with that. Darkest Dungeon, after a run, I the last thing I want to do is start another run. Yeah. Like, if everything is wiped out in Darkest Dungeon, like, I'm done. I'm going to yep, walk away I'm good. for a couple of days, and then I'm going to come back. Whereas this is just I've... like... I'm literally I'm screaming in frustration and I'm still hitting the retry button. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. All right. Is Nuclear Throne better than 20XX? I say yes, but I don't like 20XX and I think you guys probably <laughs> fell higher on 20XX than I did. Yeah. 20XX I... is fine. <laughs> I would I would say 20XX is better because I didn't have to spend 40 hours to beat it the first time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think for me, I think I think Nuclear Throne is better than um 20XX largely because I like the the level up skill choosing system in nuclear throne better than 20xx's weapon yeah, choosing the mutation stuff. system is super varied yeah and i i feel like both games have the same the same level of variation when you do choose your upgrades uh nuclear throne has less overall character upgrades but i think that's changed largely that you're picking up the weapons in the level and i think the the mutations that you're getting at the end of levels after you've leveled up are i think they're more impactful than mm. some of the upgrades in 20xx can be and just with characters alone like uh, yeah. yeah nuclear throne has what like 10, 10 i don't know 12 10 something or 12 like something yeah and 20xx has four I think, yeah. Yeah. Come on, 20XX has two. Come on. It has two <laughs> and an additional two if you're looking at the final boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, is Nuclear Throne better than The Legend of Bumbo? I'm going to kill myself for saying this, but yes. Oh. I, I, I don't think so. It's because... the difference in It's the difference in years. Mm, okay. Bumbo is... As much as we hate to admit it, and one of the reasons I feel like it kind of stopped right where it was on our list is because it's not a finished product, even though it was released sure. as a finished mm-hmm. product. It's buggy, it's broken, it didn't have sound options. I had a good conversation with someone recently, I don't remember who it was, that we don't really play early access games on the show, largely because they're changing so much and mm-hmm. they haven't really settled into being a, a final project, a product. We're and to legend- to play that card game. <laughs> No, I don't remember what it was. Um, but uh, I, Legend of Bumbo was kind of our, our reminder of that. Where it's like, mm, yeah, when a game isn't finished, then you know it. It this is why we're happy to play games that are five years old, as mm-hmm. they're uh, they've been finished. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's why it goes above Legend because okay like the difficulty you hate the difficulty however you feel about that kind of thing there is a lot to this game a lot mm. a lot to this yeah. game and don't get me wrong in five years time when bumbo is where isaac was and you know there's a <laughs> bajillion different Bum- options and everything else bumbo after birth plus <laughs> yes when we could when we revisit the list and we do a legend of bumbo versus bumbo after birth plus on the list right that's when i feel like we can have that conversation about... the legend of bumbo classic yes <laughs> <laughs> versus the new version but at this okay. point I've, like it, it, it just feels like sense. a more finished product i think you've convinced yeah. me yeah i think that makes sense okay is nuclear throne better than dicey dungeons yes i mean no <laughs> please <laughs> i was like really yeah i was like excuse like, I me <laughs> yeah, i don't i don't think so we'll be back in a minute there's technical difficulty <laughs> yeah i i don't think nuclear throne is better than dicey dungeons no, I, I Dicey think... is. I mean, we we've talked about this before. How like on our list are certain games which we consider quote unquote like intro to roguelike games. Sort yeah. of Ditto Classic was a good example of that. I think Dicey Dungeons is both an introduction game and a hardcore game because you see the difference in the characters and then the different challenges it throws up to you. The further you go in each of those characters, like plot lines. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, episode easy. three, the game's totally different. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Now you can't do yeah. anything that you did previously, and you can only do it in multiples of seven, which right. there isn't even a seven on the dice. So figure that one out. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. And I do think uh, Dicey Dungeons has the uh, advantage of age, I guess. Like, all the previous incarnations of roguelikes 
since it's one mm-hmm. of the neuter ones like mm-hmm. yeah learned in, interestingly yeah, and... bumbo uh, didn't maybe not learned as much but yeah dicey dungeon definitely learned from previous games and yeah and you can sort of see the through line there with dicey dungeons uh getting inspiration from some more classic roguelikes like nuclear throne where in nuclear throne each character plays a little bit differently mostly because you have to change your skills and and how you approach the game because of how the the positives and the negatives of the class with dicey dungeons the thing that we've always praised has been each one of these characters interacts with the game significantly differently mm-hmm. in a in a foundational sort of way and i that'll be something that i always really fondly remember uh from dicey dungeons mm-hmm. yep. yeah same it's a great game a little better than Nuclear Throne. <laughs> Only a little bit, though. <laughs> All right, so Nuclear Throne li- sits on our list at number six, and uh, that's our uh, that's our list, and that's our episode. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Uh, don't forget, next game is Solitarica, the uh, the solitaire roguelike game, which I am very excited to finally I've literally play. Literally been hearing about this for like ten years, thanks to I know, England, and it's like <laughs> finally we get to actually play it. I'm hoping it's good. <laughs> Me too. Uh, that's our episode. This game, so in- there we yeah, <laughs> see, <laughs> exciting. All right, that's our episode, and we'll see you next run. Bye. Bye. Bye.